Hi, so today we're going to take a look at the structure of DNA, RNA, and we're also going to take a look at how DNA replicates. So let's get started. So DNA is often called the blueprint of life, and that is because DNA contains all of the instructions for making proteins within the cell. So over here in this diagram, we've got... Um, We've got our DNA double helix with our DNA bases, A, G, C, and T. Um, a segment of DNA right here. So if you take a segment, segment or section of DNA, that's referred to as a gene. Um, this DNA is then coiled up or tightly coiled up and it is coiled into what we refer to as a chromosome. And then chromosomes are only seen when the cell is dividing, so this is showing a replicated chromosome. And DNA and chromosomes, as we know, are found in the nucleus of cells. So again, here's just another look at DNA and chromosome structure. Again, we've got our DNA double helix, um, a segment of DNA um, is known as a gene. So if you take a small section of DNA, um, the, those bases, A's, T's, C's, and G's, um, make up a gene. And we know that genes um, code for proteins, which give specific uh, traits to an organism, whether that be hair color, eye color, um, height, so on and so forth. So DNA, as you can see, um, it becomes tightly coiled and um, DNA um, coils itself around these proteins called histones. Those histones get coiled even further to create a nucleosome. Um, those nucleosomes get coiled even further. Think of like silly string or, um, not silly string, um, what was it? Um, silly string or a slinky. No, that's it. A slinky. Think of a slinky. So they get uh, DNA gets tightly coiled um, in um, into kind of like a slinky shape, and then that coils up in on on itself, so that we create this chromosome. And this again is showing a picture of a replicated chromosome. Um, and um, chromosomes are only seen when the cell is about to divide. Otherwise, the DNA is sort of in these nucleosome um, kind of partially coiled form called chromatin inside the nucleus of a cell. So let's take a closer look at the structure of DNA. DNA is made up of two strands of repeating subunits called nucleotides. Uh, you should be familiar with a nucleotide as we studied it during um, biochemistry, and we know that a nucleotide is the monomer form of either DNA or RNA. So we're going to take a closer look at a DNA nucleotide. A DNA nucleotide is made up of a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. So if we take a look over here at this diagram, we see we have our nucleotide, we have our phosphate group, we have our sugar, and then we have our base. Um, DNA, the initials of DNA stand for deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA sort of forms this ladder where the um, sides of the ladder are made up of this sugar phosphate backbone, and then the rungs of the ladder are made up of the base pairs um, A, T, C, and G. Um, the A and the T and the C and G are held together by hydrogen bonds. So each rung or each side of the ladder is held together by these rungs with these bases made up of um, sticking together via hydrogen bonds. Um, one strand of DNA is made up of millions and millions of nucleotides. So we've got um, a lot of nucleotides making up our DNA. So let's take a closer look at the nitrogenous bases of DNA. So DNA, uh, the nitrogenous bases are um, purines. Um, they're a double rank, so the purines are adenine and guanine, and then the other bases are single ring, rings, which are pyrimidines, and those are thymine, cytosine, and uracil if we're talking about RNA. So purines only pair with pyrimidines. So if we take a look, um, purines are two rings, uh, pyrimidines are just a single ring. So in order to remember that, 
purine has two, uh, two syllables in it. So I think of purine as two rings. The single ring is your pyrimidine. Now adenine and guanine again are your purines and your single ring, single ring um, pyrimidines are thymine, cytosine, and in the case of RNA, uracil is considered a pyrimidine. Um, again, purines only pair with pyrimidines. So we're going to take a look at um, these, um, this bonding rule in the next slide. So this bonding rule is referred to as Shargoff's rules, and Erwin Shargoff did some research about the bases, and he took a look at the amount of adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine in a body cell. And what he ended up finding was that there was roughly 30% or equal amounts of adenine as there was thymine and equal amounts of guanine as there was cytosine. So he concluded that adenine must pair with thymine and guanine must pair with cytosine. So again, we have that purine, those double rings, those purines. Um, pairing with pyrimidines, and again, you've got your guanine, your purine, again, pairing with your pyrimidines. So, the base pairing rules for DNA are as follows. A always pairs with T, and C always pairs with G. Um, uracil, again, is only found in RNA, and uracil replaces thymine, so A pairs with U when we're talking about RNA. Again, remember those bases are um, held together by hydrogen bonds, guanine and cytosine. We've got three hydrogen bonds that are going to hold together those bases, and we've got two hydrogen bonds holding together adenine and thymine. So let's take a look at the structure of RNA. Um, RNA is different than DNA in that it is made up of only one strand of repeating units called nucleotides. And the structure of an RNA nucleotide is slightly different than that of DNA. It is made up of a phosphate group, um, a ribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Now, the bases of RNA are exactly identical except for one base. So RNA has cytosine, guanine, and adenine, which is exactly the same as DNA. The base that changes is uracil. So Uracil replaces thymine in RNA. Now that's something important to remember. So if we're going to compare DNA and RNA, um, if we compare their function, DNA is used to store genetic information. Um, RNA is used to tran uh, transmit genetic information. So think of DNA as like your textbook, okay? And your textbook has all the information in it, um, needed you need in order to study for tests, quizzes, so on and so forth. Well, let's say that you didn't want to drag your 60-pound textbook around. You only wanted a small section of the 60-pound textbook. Let's say you went to the photocopier and you copied chapter 12. Okay, um, That copy of chapter 12 is similar to RNA. It allows you to transmit that information to wherever you want to go. Um, and if you need to, you can make more copies of it because you haven't destroyed that original. You still have that textbook, whether it be at school or at home, um, to go and refer back to. DNA, um, as you should remember, is found in the nucleus of cells. Its structure is that it is made up of two strands. Um, its sugar is deoxyribose and it's, um, it has the base thymine. Now its base pairing rules are as followed. So adenine pairs with thymine, cytosine pairs with guanine. Um, in RNA, um, RNA is found in the nucleus um, and in the cytoplasm. It's found um, at the ribosomes in the cytoplasm as well. Remember that RNA only has one strand. Um, its sugar is ribose and it has that unique base uracil. And the base pairing rules for RNA are A pairs with U and C pairs with G. So now that we know the structure of DNA and RNA, let's take a closer look at how DNA replicates itself or makes copies of itself. 
So DNA has to be copied before a cell divides. Um, DNA is copied during the S phase or the synthesis phase of interphase. Now interphase is a specific phase that takes place prior to cell division. Um, we haven't covered this yet, but we will cover it when we talk about mitosis. Um, so this is kind of um, a preview of what we're gonna um, what we're gonna study. Um, in the next unit, but you should be aware that DNA is copied during the S phase of interphase or before the cell divides. The purpose behind DNA replication is that when a cell divides, each new cell is going to need identical copies of DNA. Okay, so each new cell is, wants to have its own set of DNA and we're going to replicate this DNA so that each new cell has its own copy of DNA to work with. Steps of replication. Um, the strands of DNA are separated by an enzyme called helicase. We know it's an enzyme because it ends in ASA. Um, the second step is that DNA polymerase uh, forms new strands by adding complementary bases to each original strand. So we have our DNA molecule. Remember, it's made up of two strands. We've got this helicase enzyme that comes in and it separates the two strands. So now you have two um, single strands of DNA. Now DNA polymerase comes in, which is another enzyme. We know this because it ends in ASE. And it comes in and it adds complementary DNA nucleotides to each original strand. We then get this enzyme called ligase that seals the sugar phosphate backbone and the hydrogen bonds end up reforming. And ultimately we get um, two new DNA molecules exactly identical to each other and to the original DNA molecule. So each new DNA molecule is made up of one new strand and one old strand, and this is referred to as semi-conservative replication. So here's a diagram of DNA replication. Um, our first step is to separate the strands of DNA. Here we have our DNA uh, helicase, and it's coming in and it's un, uh, unwinding and um, separating the two strands of DNA. So think of yourself as undoing a zipper. You're separating you know, the two sides of your zipper. That's what DNA helicase is doing. Next, we have um, DNA polymerase, and here are our enzymes DNA polymerase in green, and those DNA polymerase molecules are coming in um, and attaching themselves to each strand of the, DNA, the separated DNA molecule, and they're adding complementary DNA bases onto the separated strand of um, DNA. At the end of replication, we get two... Um, two DNA molecules that are exactly identical to each other and to this original molecule that we started out with. So DNA polymerase, in addition to adding complementary bases, um, has a proofreading function as well. So DNA polymerase um, initially makes a mistake one in every 10,000 base pairings, but the reason why we don't see or notice those mistakes is because there are enzymes that come in after DNA polymerase and even DNA polymerase itself um, goes and proofreads its um, additions to DNA. So after proofreading, um, the new error rate is 1 in 1 billion base pairs. So our um, DNA replication is actually extremely accurate. It's very rare that you actually end up getting a mistake. But if a mistake does happen um, during replic replication, this change is referred to as a mutation. And we'll talk a little bit later about mutations and um, the negatives uh, or the benefits and the negatives to mutations. So just to review, um, you should know the structure of DNA. So DNA is made up of two strands of nucleotides. It has the sugar deoxyribose and it has the base pairing rules of adenine to thymine and guanine to cytosine. You should know the structure of RNA. You should know that it's a single strand. 
Um, it has the sugar ribose and it's got that base uracil that pairs with adenine. And you should be familiar with DNA replication. You should know when DNA replication takes place, that it takes place prior to cell division. You should know where DNA replication takes place. It's going to take place in the nucleus of a cell. And you should know how, the steps of DNA replication. How does DNA replication take place and what are the enzymes involved? Helicase, uh, DNA polymerase, and um, ligase. What do those enzymes do for DNA replication. Best of luck and I'll see you next time.